EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Houston Texans. Valus Jones now from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Onto the field now come the Bears. Moore, the motion man right. And he'll get an opportunity with it on the touch pass. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Now an option play on second down. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. But a tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Looking to throw. Williams. And he is caught. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And he's brought down. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And the top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Will Anderson just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. Williams looking to throw on second down. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. It's safe to say the passing game has found a rhythm. He's now 4-4, four four, but might need to be 5-5 five five to keep this drive going here as they face a third down. And maybe perhaps you show a running play, right? Maybe a little play action here to go ahead and let him throw the ball downfield. I wouldn't get away from him flinging it because 4-4 four for four already, I think he's got a good chance of picking this one up here on third down. That third down conversion, good for 23. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence. It allows him to play better. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least it'll be fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down. 
and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Santos' kick is up and through, and it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And the Texans set to come onto the field. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. The CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Well, that was pretty. Sidestepping defenders on his way to a pickup of nine yards. Absolutely no trouble moving the ball on the ground on the first two plays from scrimmage. Absolutely. You know what I really like? Same guy carrying the ball in both plays. And what drives me crazy is when a back has a nice run, he taps his helmet to go out of the game. I would want the ball again and again and again because you've established really nice momentum, and now you're seeing the field really well. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. On the delay, it's Mixon. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here is third down and four. Stroud out of the gun here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 24-yard line. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Stroud now on first and 10. Got a man. It's Collins complete. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up second down. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at about the Bears' 14. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. 
I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. To mix it on the check down. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there. And it helps him move the sticks. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Mixing up the middle. Able to fight through. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Joe Mixon taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Texans have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone. Unable to corral him, he fights through. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now Williams to throw on second down. Uh, quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Williams now from the gun on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Off the play fake, Williams. This will be caught downfield by Moore. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 25 yards that time. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. 
Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. He's got his target. That's complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And the deliver there is that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set him up with a first and goal. Here's Swift. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. In motion left goes Allen. One more time with Swift. Again, they stop him behind the line. That is read well for a second straight play defensively. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go -goal situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Keenan Allen from 10 yards out. And the Bears have retaken the lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive to less into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Stroud off the play fake. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here's third and three. Stroud sets up the play action. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Stroud to the air on first and ten. 
to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. That was a really nice job there, stretching zone coverage by running that route deep enough before breaking it back towards the sideline and being open. And a precise throw for the reception in the first. A handoff to Mixon. And he'll work down inside the 45. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six. On the bootleg, Stroud. Man open downfield is Diggs. He's got it. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. A big pickup of 38. That's my writing it down on my notes. I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier, was bidding for a second. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Mixon again. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Texans have taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the lead is now 14-10. to 10. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Chicago offense set to get started. Touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives, so a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that will disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and three. Off play action. Williams toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one goes for 24 yards. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. Got a great job by our 
crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Here's Williams looking to throw on second down. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Williams on first down. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw. Williams. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent game. Now Williams on third and two. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On is Santos for the Bears field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Santos' kick is up and through, and the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So it was fourth and one down in the red zone, but they elect to take just the three. And I'm a little surprised that that's how they decided to play it, that they didn't go for it there, but sometimes just take those three points and put them in your pocket. I just have one question for you, partner. Okay. Hip pocket or back pocket? After the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Heading out as the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back, what a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. Second down and six now. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's third and a few inches. Throwing now is Stroud. And will find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. Now a timeout called for by the offense. 
as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Stroud looking to throw. Pressure and he's taken down. A bear sack. Andrew Billings, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. So we've come upon halftime here in Houston, and it's the home team, the Texans, leading this one. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And he returns this to the 22. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. Mixon will get it to start the second half. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 24 now, here's the second and eight. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he is going to have the Texans first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Stroud on third down now. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. Now he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. The Texans send the punter out. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. And this will be a Bears first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle 
doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities and we just saw it there controlled the line of scrimmage created a big game that's kind of a bonus he's there to protect that high value that you have back under center but he creates space in the run game yeah not only can he dance he can mash too that's complete to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pickup there, 21 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. This is Swift on the counter. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now a second and six. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he is caught. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 30. A strong pickup of 11 keeps their drive alive. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second, I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. It isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Now they'll empty out the backfield. Williams now going to throw in third and goal. And that went off the mark. A little late with a throw. Unsuccessful pass on third down, but at least you got three points here in your hip pocket. Yeah, and I would take it from my hip pocket and put it right on the shoe of my kicker and go get those three points. This isn't even a discussion to make. This is a chance to take the lead after a good drive. Do it. Santos' kick is up and through, and they have regained the lead. So that's three field goals for him now, but heck, he's not even halfway to his career best of seven. Seems like the seven field goal games are the kind of games I always get assigned to in my other job. Let's hope for this offense's sake they can start cashing in on a few of these drives.
And after the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And here comes the Texans now. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll try to get the run game going. This is Mixer. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. 73 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. From the 23, this is second and three. Again, it's Mixon. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Stroud working out of the gun. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Stroud. Left side caught by Diggs. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Play action. Stroud now. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Inside handoff to Mixon. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Stroud now on second down. Got his man, Dell. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 24-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. On first down, here's Stroud. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's a give to Mixon. A pickup of 11, and the Texans first down. <laughs> of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Stroud to throw it. Over the middle, complete. That's Collins. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, here's Mixon. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Texans put together a fourth-quarter drive to take the lead. This has definitely been a back-and-forth affair, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they gave up the field goal on that last drive, as we remember, but it felt like their offense told them, don't worry about it. We've got your backs. We'll come back with a touchdown of our own, and they did. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Oh, the return is Jones from the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Right back to Swift again on second down. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the brave. So they took their shot, but couldn't connect. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Texans will take over. Play action. Here's Stroud. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Now Stroud. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. And Stroud now to throw. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. 
Montez Sweat drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And some room to work. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 65 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Throwing on first down, Williams. We'll get that complete to his tight end commit. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, the really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. And he is in. Touchdown. Chicago. An 18 yard touchdown run. And the Bears have taken a fourth quarter lead. So they're down in the red zone. They opt to utilize his legs instead of the arm. It works out pretty well. I like what they were thinking there because in most situations now, defense is accounting for all the other runners on the field and, of course, for pass plays. But the quarterback position, oftentimes it is unaccounted for. Offense coordinator felt it dialed it right up inside the red zone is this something teams should maybe depending on the quarterback do more often definitely if you've got a quarterback who can actually move it with his legs that's an extra option and an extra weapon for you i think they should utilize it more often After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Texans back out there and ready to go. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Stroud off the play fake. This goes out wide for Mixon. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. 
On the bootleg, Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down. It won't be by much. He needed three, and he got three, barely. But the mark shows first down. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Operating from the gun, Stroud. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 40. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it. And he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. Throwing now is Stroud. He's got it to Collins complete. And finally down it goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. And now all of a sudden the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. Here we go. First and goal. They'll give it to Mixon. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's largely been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. From the two now, second and goal. Here's Stroud. And incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. For the lead, here's third and goal. Stroud to throw it. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this one away.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So now the Bears down by four, a little over 50 seconds remaining. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and ten. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Back to throw. Able to find connect. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Back to throw. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. And that's the downside of taking these big shots because they're definitely lower percentage plays. And now you look up, and it's fourth down. So not only do you have to worry about getting big yardage, you also need to just keep the game alive. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. To a knee goes Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. But there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high-flying, but they took care of the ball.